Hey guys, Bobby Hughes here with Heritage Pride Custom Firearms on the Heritage Pride Homestead. I'm out in the greenhouse now working on the hydroponic system. And uh, we've had the system up and running for about five days. I uh, just did a five day update video which will be posted before this video. Um, so if you haven't already seen it, go ahead and check out the uh, suggested videos up here and you can go back and check out the playlist thus far. Um, and get caught up to where we're at now. So today what we're going to be doing is introducing um, both uh, nutrients and also uh, adjusting pH for our system. Now in the video prior to this, in the 5 day update video, I uh, just changed out the water, cleaned the tank and added hydrogen peroxide to our sump tank um, to help oxygenate the water to help prevent the growth of fungus and anaerobic bacteria and things like that. Um, so like I said, if you, haven't, if you haven't seen that, go back and check out those videos and the suggested videos there and um, then you'll get caught up to where we're at. So I've had the peroxide in the system for about 30 minutes now um, with the uh, air pump going, moving that water around. We should be well uh, mixed right now. So in no way shape or form right now is this a how-to video because this is my first attempt at pHing and adding nutrients to a hydroponic system so if you're looking for a how-to you may want to go somewhere else but if you just want to follow along during my learning and um, growth into hydroponics um, then stick around and uh, we'll get started all right guys, so some of the stuff that I've accumulated to do this here testing and uh, nutrient feeding is I have a TDS meter which reads our parts per million in our water. I also have a pH meter that reads our pH level. Now if you don't have a meter, you can also opt to do the solution stuff where you take a little bit of your water and a little glass vial out of the drops, it changes colors, you look at it on a chart and it tells you what your pH is. That's a great tool to have. As a matter of fact, I have that tool because um, this has to be um, calibrated every once in a while and uh, it's a good way to test your calibration and make sure it's accurate. But I've calibrated this one it's good to go now so we'll, we'll be using that. Um, as far as adjusting our pH goes, I've got this product by Draxis. Applied Science or Droxy's Applied Science. Um, it's called pH Down. It, I've also got a bottle of pH Up. Um, and uh, this is safe for fish and plants. So we could also use this in our aquaponic system uh, to adjust our pH in the aquaponic system. So we're going to be using that. The nutrients that I'm going to be using since our strawberries are brand new, I got this little sample of uh, rapid start rooting enhancer from General Hydroponics. Uh, I'm going to be using that because I got it for free so I'm just going to toss it in. Um, and I'm also using Urban Hydroponic Strawberry Nutrient. Now, with that said, I also bought um, some pepper and tomato nutrient and some herb nutrient, stuff like that from the same company. And I was reading the reviews on this and people are complaining about it being moist and wet inside the container and it being all mushy like and the recommended dose on this is 22 grams uh, approximately three quarters of an ounce for five gallons of water so I'm assuming that it means dry weight not measuring cup but I'm not sure um, it doesn't say specifically on there um, how to do it so but it does tell us that our goal conductivity is 800 parts per million so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this little scoop and I'm gonna put a little bit of our water from here into here and I'm gonna take a little bit and put it in here mix it up put it in our system let it you know kind of swirl around and then check our ppm and see what our parts per million is my goal is 800 parts per million so is that's going to take me forever it really is 
Um, but now I will know in the future how much nutrient I need for my 22 gallons of water in my sump tank. So first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and kill our pump, our air pump. Like I said, our, our hydrogen peroxide has had time to kind of get acclimated in there and get mixed up real well. And there's a rule of thumb that I found from reading and research. And the rule of thumb is uh, nutrient for, nutrients first, then pH. So we adjust our nutrients and then we adjust our pH because your nutrients can actually throw off your pH. So anyway, and even on the instructions on here, uh, it says add your fertilizer and adjust pH. So, aka add your fertilizer first and then adjust your pH. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to need a starting point for our parts per million or our TDS. So I'm going to take my little TDS uh, pen here and I'm going to put it in our water and read our parts per million. You can push the hold button. It'll hold it there for you. So you can see we are at four parts per million. All right. Our goal is 800 parts per million. So our goal really is 804 parts per million. So you want to take your base number, whatever your base number is, minus four. So that's that's where we start. Now we want to add 800 to that because that's how many parts per million of nutrient we need. And that'll give us 804 parts per million. So that's our end goal there. So now, like I said, I'm going to take a little bit of water and dip it into my cup here. And I'm going to take, I've got a 22 gallon set up here. This says it does 200 gallons of solution, up to 200 gallons of solution. So I'm assuming it's going to take probably about a, well, a good part of this bag. So I'm going to start with one full level cap of nutrients and hope that that's not too much. I'm just going to use our handy dandy measuring cap here. Whoops. Put it, well, keep dropping it in there. Put it in there. And then we need to stir our solution up, let it dissolve in this water. And I think you can probably just add this directly to your uh, sump tank. But in my case, um, I'm thinking mix it up in here and then pour it in. It's less dissolving, it'll already be dissolved. So when you add it in, you won't have to dissolve it. Add it to our system. And we'll just let that run for a few minutes and kind of let it get worked into the water and uh, let it dissolve. I can see it kind of on the bottom there. Um, so I'm going to let that kind of get worked into the water and then we'll recheck our PPM. So our uh, solution has kind of dissolved in the water here. I've got a lot of stuff kind of sitting on the bottom of the tank. Um, and I've, you know, I've tried to stir it up and I ran the uh, air stone over it, try to stir it up, and it just settles kind of back in there. Um, so I don't know really how long it takes to, um, I guess, dissolve completely. But I rechecked our, our PPM just a minute ago, and it was at 351. Uh, it's been about two minutes now, additional time. So I'm going to recheck it again, and uh, we're at about 361 parts per million, 357, 358, right around in that neighborhood. So obviously that's not enough. So I'm going to dip out a little bit more water. Not quite that much. Actually, yeah, I am. I'm going to do quite a bit of water because it 
didn't want to stir up real well. And I'm going to go ahead and get another handy dandy cap full of our nutrient. And go ahead and add it to the water. And use our little handy dandy stir stick. Kind of stir it up here. So I ended up um, doing two full scoops and then a half a scoop and we were at like 775 at a half a scoop and um, then I added another quarter scoop and that put us up to about, let me double check it again here, we're actually at about 860 ish so we're a little bit over 800 um, which I'm okay with that because our plants aren't seedlings they're uh, you know they've already started sprouting it says for seedlings your uh, goal conductivity is 800 ppm plus your source water so we should have been at 804 that was our goal but for mature plants you're looking at 1200 ppm plus your source water so um, even though ours aren't brand spanking new plants, or since ours aren't brand spanking new, I'm going with um, 867 is enough. As a matter of fact, we could probably go ahead and up it to about 900, just my guess. Uh, but I'm going to leave it where it's at for now, at eight, uh, 867. So there's a lot of sediment on the bottom of the tank. I don't know if that's normal or not. Like I said, I don't know if it's normal for my fertilizer to be mushy, uh, but it is. So I'm going to try to use it anyway because I bought it and I don't want it to go to waste. Um, I would imagine that even though it's wet, it would still be okay, um, but I don't know. I'm not a chemist or a scientist or anything like that, maybe a mad scientist, but um, we're going to go with it. We're going to roll with it the way it is and see what happens. See what kind of results we get from it. So we're at about 860 ppm um, with two and a half, uh, two and three quarter caps. So now, next time I know, uh, base, uh, run about what I'm getting. So basically each full cap is giving me about um, 350 parts per million in one full cap um, and you can play around this is a inch and a quarter schedule 40 PVC cap uh, but you can play around with it however you want now for the rapid start it says one teaspoon per five gallons of water um, and that equals out with my tank to be about um, three quarters of an ounce uh, so I'm just gonna put this whole bottle in there it's one full ounce and it says for aggressive usage two teaspoons for five gallons of water so I don't think it's gonna hurt anything for me to do it it was a test bottle um, I just want to use it there ain't no sense in it sitting here so it says shake well I'm gonna shake it up and I'm just gonna pour it directly the whole bottle the whole fluid ounce I'm gonna pour it into our uh, into our system We'll let that kind of fizzle around in there a little bit. And the next step is to check our pH level and adjust that. So all of our nutrients have been added and we're ready to test our pH. So I'm going to use my little pH pen here and uh, go ahead and put it in our system and see what our pH is, is reading here. The instructions say give it about 30 seconds to uh, level out. Looks like right now we're at 4.4, 4.5 um, in our system. And just for 
curiosity. I'm going to check it back here. Now we're down to 4.2. 4.1. So we're really low. So uh, I tested the pH before I started just to see what my rainwater was at. And I was right at about 6.5 to 6.7 pH uh, with our rainwater. Now, uh, what's important about this is I've seen some people on YouTube do their pH first and then add their nutrients after they've adjusted their pH. Well, this is a prime example of how your nutrients can adjust your pH. So, in our case, our nutrients dropped our pH drastically um, by like two and a half points. So, um, we are going to actually need, I thought we would need the pH down, but we're actually going to need the pH up. So, I've got my pH up here. Same company, same, same maker, all that good stuff. Uh, but this is a pH up. It says add one tablespoon and test pH. Add more till desired pH is met. One bottle cap equals one tablespoon. Um, and it's all food grade, safe for humans, pets, and plants. Um, and it says that it can cause prolonged exposure, can cause skin irritation and skin burns. So we're not going to touch it after we put it in. Um, now, my urban hydroponic fertilizer recommends a pH of 6.5 to 6.8. So, I don't know how much of this it's going to take to adjust our pH. So, I'm going to go ahead and just add one cap at a time until, our, until we reach the goal of, of, of what we want. Uh, one thing that I have uh, read about is not to dip your cap in your water and swirl it around to wash it off um, you will get the nutrients that's in the water into your pH solution and you want to keep that as sterile as possible so we added that cap just going to kind of let the air stones move it around and then we'll put our tester back in and see if it's adjusted our pH All right, looks like it brought it up to about 5.3. So we went from, what, 4.3 to 5.3. So let's add another cap. Alright, looks like it we're we're right at 6.6. .6. Our goal was 6.5 to 6.8. So I'm gonna say that that suits me just fine. So there is our pH process and our nutrient process. Alright, so our system is back up and running again with the uh, nutrients now added and the pH adjusted with a nice clean tank we've also done the hydrogen peroxide um, addition to the system as well and uh, we'll see how uh, everything pans out alright guys and uh, gals that pretty much concludes my uh, little video on the first uh, nutrient adding and pH balancing of our hydroponic rail system here in the greenhouse. Uh, like I said in the beginning, this is my first time doing this. So I'm not claiming to be an expert, nor is this a DIY video or a uh, educational video other than maybe learning uh, how not to do it. Who knows? Um, if you do have experience in hydroponics and um, and you catch me doing something wrong in the process of this stuff, please, please leave it in the comments. 
um, let me know if I'm doing something wrong. Um, everything that I'm doing, I've, I'm doing based on what I've either watched others do or what I have read about. So, but book knowledge is nothing compared to first-hand experience. Um, so if you've ever used this urban hydroponic strawberry fertilizer stuff, um, let me know if you had the same kind of outcome with it being wet and mushy. Um, if you had solids in the bottom of the tank, that kind of stuff, I'm interested to know about. So um, leave that in the comments below. If you have any questions concerning anything else, uh, go ahead and leave those down below too. Recommendations for other videos, um, anything like that. Also, while you guys are on here, if you are following along and building your system from scratch, uh, check out the link in the description below for the Heritage Pride Marketplace. And uh, about 95% of the stuff that I'm using in my hydroponics setup, you can purchase right there from the Heritage Pride Marketplace. Um, same brand, same exact product. So if you're hesitant about uh, trying something different uh, or trying an alternate way or something like that, then you can buy directly the exact same thing that I have and you can use your Amazon account to do so. Um, so check that out uh, as well. And uh, anyway, don't forget to check out the suggested videos and the support us link uh, up above in the little corner icon thingy. And don't forget to rate and subscribe by clicking on the little link right there, the little block thingy. Um, anyway, guys, that's it for this video. Um, until next time, get out there, shoot some guns, be safe, and most importantly, have fun. See you guys later.